Hello again. This will be a continuation of our discussion of UI Bezier path. Um, in the previous video, we created a simple example here that, um, that wait, that wasn't the one. It was this one over here. Sorry about that. Um, that drew a, a path, right? So we used um, CA basic animation and we, uh, you know, we drew this circle, right? So uh, maybe we should take that one step further, right? So let's imagine you wanted to create sort of an interactive circle, like maybe like a chart or a graph or something. And as we have a, maybe we have a slider or something that lets us change the, the value, right? And, and we want to show the change graphically by drawing a circle, right? So um, what we'll do is we'll give our class a property, right? And what we'll do is we'll make it a computed property. So we'll say uh, var, um, how about value, right? Equals, uh, we'll make this a float, okay? And we'll give it a value of zero to begin with, right? And whenever this property is set, what we'll wanna do is we'll want to, um, you know, redraw the path, okay? So we'll like, I'm gonna put a note in here, draw stroke, okay? So we'll, we'll draw the stroke here and we'll draw it to the value. Okay, so this value, if it goes from zero to one, this should be able to draw the stroke from the beginning to the end of, of the path, okay? So um, to draw the stroke, we could put the code here, but it's probably good if we had a function to do this because it might you know, just be a little easier to keep track of, right? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a function and I'll say, um, you know, how about draw path, right? And then what we'll do is, is we'll call that draw path function from here. So we'll say draw path, right? So anytime you change the value, we're gonna call draw path, and then draw path is gonna change the, um, the stroke, right? So what we'll do is we'll say um, shape layer dot stroke end, right? Equals, and then we'll wanna get the value here. Now, stroke end wants a CG float, but we've declared this as a float. So we'll have to say uh, CG float and then we'll convert value into a CG float. Now I'm gonna use float here because most of the information coming from outside will prob like will be a decimal value and it's probably more likely gonna be a float than a CG float. So that's kind of why we'll do this little, this little exchange here, right? We could have declared this as CG float, but uh, I'm guessing more often, you know, because I'm picturing like we can attach this to the slider, for example, and that produces a float. So anyway, there we go, right? So we can set that. I'm going to go down here and remove the, um, the, the animation that we added. So I'll just put a comment around all this because I don't want it to be involved now, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the stroke end I'll leave this example in there, but I'm gonna say shape layer dot um, stroke end equals uh, value, right? Now I'm gonna have a problem because it's gonna say like, hey, you know, value is not um, is not the right type. Did you mean to make that a CG float? So we'll say, yeah, sure. That should have been a CG float. Okay, so this way, you know, when we begin our application here, the um, the value that we declared, the default value for, for, for value here, will be the end value for the stroke. So essentially it'll be zero when we begin, but if we decided to use a different number here, then, then you know, it would be that value, okay? So anyway, so there's our, there's our thing there, right? Now let's add a slider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to storyboard here, and what I'll do is I'll go into the, um, the you know object palette here and I'll grab a slider and I'll just put it right about here we could add some constraints I'm going to just leave that out for now I'll make my slider a little bit wider and then um, let's get um, I'm going to do this I'm going to go to view controller again and then option click to get storyboard to show up at the same time right and then what we'll do is in our view controller here. I know this text is a little cramped there, but I'm gonna make some space at the top here between um, you know, my declaration for my class and my view did load method. And then I'll use the control key and create an IB outlet and an IB action for the slider, okay? So um, actually maybe we only need an action. So I'll make an action here, I'll call it slider 
changed. And maybe I'll set the type to UI slider and then the event is value changed. And then we can close the, uh, the assistant editor. Okay, so uh, here we are. Now we'll need, in order to set the value for our circle path, we'll need to declare it as a class property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let uh, cp uh, colon will be type um, circle path exclamation point and actually wait this is going to be a var let's make that var cp right and then we'll have to it's going to say like hey you know what you haven't declared this variable yet because um you know we declared this one with let down here so i'm going to remove the let okay so now we're set right so we've got a reference to this this variable that we can use right here and then what we'll do is we'll say hey you know whenever the slider changes why don't we say uh, cp dot value equals sender which is in our case is a UI slider so you can see here if I if I look right here it says sender is UI slider and it says UI slider right there so we'll say sender and every UI slider has a value right and the value is the value of the slider and the value of the slider by default is 0 to 1 but you can set the value in storyboard so if I switch to storyboard and I click on the slider it's hard to read here, but um, you'll see under the properties there, it says minimum value zero, maximum value one, right? And there's some other options you can set in here, but essentially the default value is zero to one, which is perfect for our circle. So, <clears throat> pardon me, let's, uh, let's give it a try, right? And uh, this, this actually, this value, the, the value from the slider is a float. So if we, you know, if we option click on this guy, you can see it says, type of value as a float, right? So that works perfectly with the float value that we set here for the, C the circle path value, right? So let's give it a try, right? We'll, we'll click run. And, and then here we go, right? Oh, there's our circle, right? So, uh, so that works pretty good, not, not too hard, right? Now watch very closely as I move the slider, I'm gonna move it really quick to the center. Okay, now what you should be noticing there, watch, I'll drag it all the way across really fast. Okay, you'll know, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but what, what I'm trying to get you to notice is that as I move the, the slider here, the circle actually lags behind a little bit. So what it does is as I move this thing, the circle actually animates along the path. It doesn't just jump to exactly the position where it's synced up with the slider, okay? And that's an effect of, um, of CA path or a, a CA sh shape layer, right? Um, these layers have an implicit animation, so they automatically animate something. We added an animation here, and that's okay too, so we can animate things, but they have an implicit animation that kicks in every time. So actually, it takes about a quarter of a second for the thing to update and jump to the position that we're sending it to. Okay, so just be aware of that, because sometimes that can work for you, and sometimes it can work against the effects that you're trying to create. So I'll do another video where, um, where we turn that effect off, but uh, just be aware that that's there. So anyway, so um, hopefully that adds some more interest to um, working with, with UI Bezier Path and some of the properties that it has, right? And uh, thanks for watching.